Welcome to A24 Quest, your only one-stop shop to get your lovely, lovely voices of two grown-ass men. Did you say welcome to A24 Quest? I did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the podcast. We just did a A24 Quest. This is uh, Purple Panda. I'm Purple, you're Panda. <laughs> Do you ever wonder oh, if Lord. there are people out there who yeah. um, never figured out that the names were a joke in that April Fool's Day video? Do you ever wonder? Yeah, you know, I kind of do. Yeah, we used each other's names. Yeah. I wonder if that's confused anybody. I anyway. Hope, I hope so. You hope so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um... <coughs> So we got uh, we got some news for you. So first of all, Christmas and New Year's happened. So Happy New Year! Yeet! It's 2019. Yeah. The year of our year. And now what we're going to be doing, um, we've, we've celebrated Christmas, we've eaten our cakes, we've looked at our presents, uh, we drank too much and had Colin sick, and now it is time... For us to announce our plans for this next year. And so far, our plans are looking like... Um, I'm going back to, to work at Uline. So, uh, last time, that put a big old wrench in our recording schedule. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. This time, I'm going to try to avoid that by letting you know as soon as possible what days I can work. Which will probably be at least one day a weekend. I'll find time to be able to do the podcast. So, hopefully, while I'm at Uline, there shouldn't be any major breaks... Um, spanning three months, kind of like last time. Sure. In other news, I am going on a big old vacation starting January 18th till January 28th. So there will probably be a week this month where you will not get anything unless Colin wants to do something fancy. Yeah, but if I do, it'll be on my channel. So this channel yes. will go dark for a little bit. Yep. Um, yeah, and I think with that... Yeah, we can just dive right in. Well, yes. Is that all you had to announce? Uh, I think so. You want to do a quick update? How you doing, Colin? How you doing in this new year? I'm doing pretty good. So let's talk about music. <laughs> uh, oh, you don't want to know how I'm doing. I see how it is. <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be working on a project for Wheel Justice, and it's super hush-hush secret, top secret. Good thing you said that, because otherwise I would have just jumped in and been like, wow! <laughs> I would have said a lot of things about it. Oh, well, actually, you don't even know what the project is. Oh, it's not that project. No, no, it's, it's a different else. project. It's it's something else entirely. It's it, not that big. But it's he, so hush hush. I I had no idea. He's he's got me working on it, and uh, <laughs> he's cracking that whip. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't have to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'll just do it for free. I don't care. I find it way more interesting to work on other people's content than my own. I put a lot more effort into it. <laughs> So, I'm working on something for Wheel Justice, and, um, yeah, not a lot's going on. I'm working tonight. Not for Wheel Justice, but for money. Fun fact, we were going to record yesterday. Yeah. Um, but then Colin's like, I didn't watch a movie, uh, one of the H24 Quest movies, yeah, so I'm like, all right, well, how about we postpone? I sat down to watch it twice, and something came up both times, yeah. and I was like, ah. Well, that's all right. We figured it out. Um, so I'm like, all right, how about we push it off till tomorrow? And then that same night when I'm like, all right, so we'll, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow instead. I, and I, I was finishing up the Haken album. Ooh. Uh, well, by the way, we're going to dive right into music. That's what this nice segue is right here. Sick. So I was listening to the new Haken album. <sighs> well, I, <laughs> there's an unfortunate mix up that happened in my head. Uh, and I was very sad be when I found out it was a mix-up. So Haken released two albums this year, all right? Did one you them, know that? Yeah, one of them's Did a you know live that? album. One right? of them's a live album Yeah. Uh, called L Plus One V E. Yeah. Uh, it's got four songs on it released this year. And I was like, you know what would be really cool? If I listened to the whole album like Colin wanted me to. So I clicked it. 
and I listened to it, and I looked at it, and I'm like, okay, it's got four songs. That's kind of weird, but you know, it's Prague. Yeah. It might have it might have something interesting. And and, you, and you didn't realize that two of those songs are from the mountain. Hold your horse. Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. All right. So, because okay, let me get to it. Okay. So. <laughs> On Spotify, I pulled it up, and I'm like, falling back to Earth. Bam! Clicked it, started listening to it, didn't even really read the title. And I'm like, okay, this is alright. You know, it seems kind of like all of their other stuff that I've mm-hmm. listened to. And then I listened to the other three, and I'm like, wow, this album sounded really good. But it's just a rehash, and it's all live, which is kind of weird for your studio album. Yeah. So I'm like, but I mean, I guess if they're trying to be that experimental, why not? It's done, It's been done before. So, Ramshackle Glory's <laughs> done entire studio albums they're just live recordings so. yeah so i was like all right i'll accept it you know i'm gonna come in i'm gonna talk about how it kind of feels really repetitive and like these songs sound like something i've heard from them before <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you realize and then last night i looked i was looking at it and i'm like all right like, i better learn the names of these and i'm like oh no Oh no, these are songs they've done. This is yeah. just this is just a live album. This isn't the new album. Right. And so I I had to look a little deeper. It, approximately one album deeper and I would have found their actual new album. <laughs> yeah. So no, I I I have listened to the newest. <laughs> You've listened album. to the live album. I didn't listen to that one. I listened to Vector. <laughs> but I didn't listen to Vector. Okay, fair Unfortunately. enough. Unfortunately, I tried though. I really did. Um Anyway, yeah. that's my story about Haken. How is the new Haken album? It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's um, <laughs> I would say it's not quite as experimental as the Mountain was. Uh, it's a little more straightforward. It's a lot heavier than the Mountain. It's um, and uh, its motif is there's a lot of synth going on. That's kind of nice. Um, none of the songs. Um, I'd say Good Doctor is my favorite off the album. I actually have heard that because that was one of their singles they released a little while ago. Yeah, that's a good one. That's like that's like you know the mountain levels of like this is good good Haken, and the the rest is is also good, but it's like nothing really s- stood out to me that much. All right. There are some sections in there where there's like absolutely brutal breakdowns, and it's like that's crazy. It's like <laughs> way, way more brutal than the mountain ever got, and it's like that's awesome. So it's a very heavy album. If you if you've heard the mountain and you're not super into metal, um, you may not like Vector because it's it's way more metal than the mountain was. But um, yeah, I suggest giving it a listen. It's a uh, it's pretty good. Also, their live album they released is also pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> if you, yeah, no, I just I've I felt so stupid afterwards. I'm like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's it opens with "Falling Back to Earth," which is actually one of my favorite songs of theirs, almost more so than "Cockroach King." I'd I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one. Dope. Yeah, that one has a phenomenal ending. I love the ending to that song. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I just, I felt just dumb afterwards. Anyway, um, what's your music of the week? My song of the week Blah. is, okay, uh, this song was introduced to me by Roberto, and uh, I had heard it a few other times, but it never really stuck with me, but then finally I was in a car with Abe, and he listened, he showed it to me, and I was like, oh, what's this? And he was like, oh, it's Never Meant by American Football, and I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm finally getting into this song, and, and, and I actually analyzed why I wasn't super keen on it, and I looked up things about it, and I appreciate it more now, and, um, the reason, okay, I thought it sounded a little uh, derivative, but then I looked it up, and it turns out I'm an idiot. It came out in 1999, a good 10 years before I thought the other things that sounded derivative of came out. (laughs) And then I and Abe was talking to me about American football, and he's like, "Oh yeah, they like wrote the blueprint for like modern uh, emo music." And I'm like, "I can totally see what you mean. You could tell me this song was released this year by a Midwest emo band, and I would believe you." And it came out 20 years ago. It's it's uh it's pretty phenomenal. So it's like once you know go know the context about American football and once you really understand what it means that it came out in 1999, um it gets very impressive. And uh so yeah, my song of the week is Never Meant by American Football. 
Nice. It's a nice little laid back <clears throat> emo kind of math rocky jam. And uh yeah, it's a good song. It sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um <clears throat> that's kind of neat. It is neat. Yeah. Uh my song of the week is going to a an oldie but a goodie as well. Uh it's by Muddy Waters, and if you know who Muddy Waters... Do you know who Muddy Waters is? I know the name. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Old blues guy. Old blues guy. He's just one of the classics. He's uh, he's the guy who... I believe he wrote Hoochie Coochie Man, and that's like very famous blues song. That's what they called me in high school. Yeah, sure. <laughs> God damn you. Uh, but no, my song from him, though, is not Hoochie Coochie Man. It's Champagne and Reefer. Um, Ooh. yeah, this song is chill as, f- um, and it's, it's just, it's a, it's a bluesy jam. I love bluesy jams. Yeah. I do. I really do. So I, I was listening to this in my car and I just, I was digging it and then I was digging it more and then I'm like, I gotta pick this. I do. I just do. Right. Yeah. Cool beans. So yeah, there you go. Champagne and Reefer by Muddy Waters. Yeah. It's a good time. Also... Um, not that it really matters, but Blackstone Cherry, the Southern Rock band, that's kind of getting popular, getting popular nowadays, also did a cover of this song in their Back to Blue album, and that is also a pretty good cover, but I like the original better, so there you go. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it have been much better to call it Black and Blue, because the name's Blackstone Cherry? Yeah, but they wanted to go back to blues. Oh, okay. And I think that the back to blues kind of sounds like black and blue, so then they just said, yeah. Yeah. But I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to talk about the albums I listen to? Yeah, because I have absolutely no more music to talk okay, about. Sick. I listen to four albums. Let me see if I can remember what all four of them were. Okay, I can. Uh, I already talked about uh, uh, the, the the one by Haken. Mm-hmm. Vector by Haken. That's a good one. But I listened to Age of Odds by uh, Sufjan Stevens. And I Stuffy f- boy. finally did it. Have you have you listened to that whole thing? Not the whole thing. Really? Huh. <laughs> you're, you're really on my case about not having listened to it. And it's pretty amazing that you haven't listened well, to I it just, yourself. I just told you to listen to the first three. No, I listened. I'm a completionist. No, you're not. <laughs> no, not really. But, <laughs> I, yeah, I listened to the whole thing. Yeah, okay. What'd you think? Really good. I mean, still not really my thing. Um, I, I There's still just something about Sufjan, St- Sufjan Stevens that I, I'm not... Just It just somehow doesn't really click with me a lot of times, but it is a good album, and I think it's great. And I think I'm trying to get more into Sufjan Stevens because they then listen to another Sufjan Stevens album, his Christmas album. Uh, the the one of his two Christmas albums, the one that's all banjo, and it's uh it's really it's really good actually. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> what a choice! Yeah, it's like it's mostly banjo. The it's, one it's that's very, all banjo. It's very folky, <laughs> and uh, it's great. Honestly, I enjoyed it a whole lot. So I recommend his. And then I listened to a little bit of Shatner Claus. <sighs> I uh, love Shanter Claus. Shanter Claus. <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh it's really bad. Yeah. Like it's it's really bad. So it I is. didn't I didn't sit through all of it. Oh, but um God, it's funny. I just I it. can't get over the Iggy Pop song. Because Iggy Pop sings. Oh. And it's just terrible. Yeah. Like like Iggy Pop, he certainly <clears throat> had it at one point, but man has he lost it. He's like so Holy night. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> like it's, he it's sounds great. like he's gonna die. <laughs> he sounds like he's on death's door. <laughs> and then how we me and Josh actually had a running joke about uh about that particular song. Uh, when when William Shatner does the line "Jesus, Lord at Thy birth," do you remember that? Jesus, because it's like because it's like he he's just super super. He sounds sedated the whole song. He's just like really laid back. And then there's just like there's a there's a musical break from Iggy Pop, and then it comes back to William Shatner. He's just like Jesus, 
Yeah. And, and our uh, our theory is that that's not part of the song. That's just him reacting <laughs> to the song. Oh my god, that's so funny. Well, and just the <laughs> big pause after he says it just yeah. doesn't Jesus. help it at all. He's just like, <laughs> Jesus, Lord, Lord and thy birth. birth. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. It's just so funny to hear Iggy Pop and then him just coming like, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I still stand by his choice to make this album because if I was that I, old I, and are that you famous, me? I'm glad he made that album. <laughs> Have you seen that album cover? It's yes, phenomenal. It's so good. It's just him in some aviators at a Santa hat, smiling like an idiot to a Christmas tree. Yes, it's just him. <laughs> what oh are you doing, God. William? God, he doesn't give a shit. I think he's yeah, no, a, he's just he's just giving up. He's, he's just like whatever. I don't think he's even giving up. I just think he's having a good time. Yeah, he's well, like he's I want to go hang out with Iggy, yeah, Iggy Pop, and you know? all these other people. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's great. Yeah, it's really good. Anyway, so I I listened to um those two uh, Sufjan Stevens albums, and I I listened to the new Wolfpack album, and I would highly recommend Ooh. hearing the new Wolfpack album. Cause it's it's weird. It's it's really good. I would I would say this is like maybe my favorite Wolfpack album. Uh, cause they cause it's got a very different vibe from the, all their previous albums. Mm. And there's like one song with like country twang to it. They're mm. like trying some weird stuff, and it's working out. That's they're neat. still they're still pulling from seventies funk, but it's like a different section of 70s funk and there's like like a little bit of like r&b type stuff in there and well it's... you're talking about hill climber yeah i've yeah. actually listened to a section of hill climber yeah it's pretty good yeah i love that cover art for hill climber i think it's so neat oh yeah they um, do they do really neat cover art uh so yeah those are the albums i listen to i actually do have an, another thing i want to bring up uh a mini rant a mini one just a mini sure. one because i don't want to go on for too long um if, if you guys want to hear more about it, go ahead and ask, but I'm sure you'll get the gist. Uh, so I was on, this will tie into movies, but I was on a movie club, went to video club, started watching some music with, shit, was it Al Heron? I don't know, I wasn't there. I know. It was either, I think it was Al Heron. Um, and so we were going back and forth throwing things on there, and I ended up throwing on kind of this poppy jam that I'm that I really like. Uh, AJR, burn the house down. And I know it's it's kind of trashy pop, but I enjoy it. It's got some really neat synth trumpets in there that I that I dig a lot. Um, and and I put it on there knowing that it might not be his thing, and whatever you know, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, we were just showing each other stuff, and so he's like, man. I'm sorry if you like this, but this song sucks. And I'm like, all right, that's fair. And he's like, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's just kind of been my bop for the past couple of weeks. And then he said something that that kind of grinds my gears. And it's not him. That It's it's not him, okay? okay. It's, it's not El Heron that irritates me. It's the idea that irritates me. Um, uh, he said, we all have our guilty pleasures. Now, this typically, I, I, at first I was like, yeah, yeah you know, I, it's not really guilty pleasure. I, I actually really do like the song, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, sent that out. We listened to some more stuff. I went on my way, went to work. Of course, while I'm at work, I get to drive in my car and just sit and stew in my own thoughts. Yeah. And so that kind of just kept going around in my mind. And it taught me how much I absolutely hate the concept of guilty pleasure. Sure. Yeah. Because the idea that you're going to feel bad about something you enjoy, yeah. unless it's harmful to you or somebody else, makes no sense to me. And it makes me well upset. <laughs> I think the term guilty pleasures exists because certain people do have guilty pleasures, but you may not be one of those people. If you like something, you're open about liking it. I like... Uh... <sighs> What would, what would I consider a guilty pleasure? When I consider things a guilty pleasure, it's simply because it, it's things that I've out, I've outspoken about not liking. And then there's a th things every once in a while where it's like, okay, this is like, I like this. But it's like, I, I've been very outspoken about not liking this ki kind of thing, but I'll be like, I do like this one thing. You know? like uh, but, I, I <laughs> So do you feel bad about liking it, though? Not really. I mean, I, I feel like... I feel like I wouldn't share the fact that I like it very openly because it's just like, I don't know, people would call me a hypocrite 
maybe they wouldn't but that's just like that's just my paranoia it's like i'm an opinionated guy and every once in a while my opinions aren't aren't uh like waterproof and uh sometimes something slips through and i just feel insecure about that so i do have guilty pleasures i get you i get you so guilty pleasures are a thing that exists but i i do think that the concept of like being ashamed of liking something isn't a thing we should do it's just it's it's just it's instinctual to some people i i know and yeah. and that's why you know i i didn't go i don't want to make this a huge thing but you know i just i sat in it and i just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and i'm like you know if i like something there is no way in hell that i'm going to let somebody make me feel bad about enjoying that thing sure unless yeah. it's like murder yeah <laughs> you know like if if i enjoy a movie or or video game or anything like like Spyro, right? Sure. Uh, taken as an example. So you you were telling me about the the purple pandas that dab. Yeah. Right. Now I'm not saying you were trying to make me feel bad. No, no, no. See, but, I, I I I never try to make somebody feel bad yes. about liking something. But uh, taking this as an example, not yeah. I know you weren't. Um, but taking that as an example, you tell me that, assuming that you're trying to make me feel bad. Should I feel bad? Hell no! I enjoy no. that game. I have a good time with that Nobody game. Nobody should ever be told not to like something they like. Yeah, I just... I was... I don't know. I was just sitting in it, and I was just thinking yeah. about that over and over. No, you can talk about something you like, and somebody can disagree with you. Oh, for sure. And but, that's, that's well, where Somebody can disagree with the quality of this thing. For sure. You can't disagree with somebody liking something. Yeah. You know? It, it, it's... Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this isn't a bash on all Heron. You just... You started that idea in my head, you know? I, you started this. <laughs> And I'm gonna finish it. But no, it was it was just it was that's that's how it started. It was a, it was a good little back and forth argument I have I had with myself in my head. Sure. Um, thanks to you all here on. So yeah, and then we listened to uh, Panic at the Disco. Yeah, yeah, which is a guilty pleasure for some. I've actually um, I've I, I I've I'm at the point where like there are good Panic at the Disco songs and I'm not guilty about that. I I've, I there's there's some good ones. He's a good singer. Yeah, he's a really good singer. Absolutely, that song Gospel. I like that one. That's a good one. I don't know that much Panic at the Disco. I just know oh, well imagine. That's a good one too. I like that one a lot. I like that one. Back when I was in high school. Yeah. I, I Well, see, I was expected to hate it back in high school. A lot of people were. Because it's like, it was so big, and it was like so emo, and it's like, ugh, <laughs> seen kids listen to this. And, um, uh, I kind of liked it back then, but I, I, I wouldn't tell anybody I liked it, but as an adult, I'm like, I like it, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's just, you know, the more I grow up, the more I remember back in the day, you know, I wasn't allowed to like this, and I wasn't allowed to tell people I like that, and it really just irritated me the more and more I thought about it. Yeah. Like, uh, well, here, I'll, I'll talk about it. We're going into a new section today. This section is called uh, Tabletop Games, all right? So we're going to talk about Pokemon the card game. Okay. At the age of 21, you're not supposed to enjoy Pokemon the card game anymore. Is that so? I believe so, because it uh, doesn't you, seem... Maybe you were expected to move on to magic. Yeah, which is fair. Yeah. But it's also dumb, because I can like whatever the hell I want, and I'm going to. So you know what I did? I went out, and I, I bought myself a pack of Pokemon cards, oh, yeah. and I built myself a Pokemon deck, and then I went and I fought another 22-year-old with my Pokemon deck, and we had a great time. Sick. It was awesome. Yeah. Why am I not supposed to enjoy that? I, I have, are you not supposed to like Pokemon cards? I haven't really. I don't think so. Encountered. I think that. that's supposed to be a child's game, and people will look at you funny when you tell them, "Yeah, no, I bought some Pokemon cards today." Nah. And you know what? I I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm sick of the idea of people not being able to enjoy what they like just sure. because they're not the right age, they're not the right gender. You know, it's dumb. It's yeah. dumb. You should be able to like what you like. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I should be able to go and play in the pay, like the ball pit. <laughs> and, Dude, and there the are adult ball pits now. Did <laughs> you know that? Cool. I, I, yes. Yeah. Other than they're like havens for disease, I, I yeah, yeah that's, I would. That's also. Not I would put so a cool. put a put a mask on that would go in. But yeah, no. Um, 
So I was just I was getting all worked up about that. Although I have really been getting into Magic the Gathering as well lately. Just something about strategy based card games I've been digging lately. Um been doing a lot of back and forth uh battles with my brother. You know what it is? What is it? In high school, ever there's a big uh, uh, attitude and this big like push to fit in, and a lot of people don't outgrow that mindset. They're always very aware of what they're supposed to like and what is normal for them to like because they want to fit in. And if somebody uh, you know kind of grows out of that, then they're like, "What? You can't like what you're you can't you're not allowed to like things that you're not supposed to like." You know, it's like. Yeah, it all stems from our childhood, because it's like, when you're a kid, it's like, you had to like what everybody else liked, otherwise you're, nobody would talk to you. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, that's, so... It's sad. Yeah, and so, yeah, some people just... there. The, a lot of the world's problems stem from some people never grew out of the elementary school mentality. That really is what a lot of it boils down to. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's too bad. So yeah, that's that's my mini rant. If you want to ask me questions, argue with me, yada yada, you can email us at purplepandapodcast at gmail dot com and give me your ideas, because that'd be kind of fun to talk about. Yeah, but I I think we're gonna cut that here just so that we don't go on about it forever. Sounds which good. I probably could. Um, but yeah, so you want to move on to uh, movies? You want to do movies? I've got a fair amount of video games to talk about too, but we can do movies. I got some video game stuff. but I got... I'm super pumped to talk about movies today. I am too. I forgot how excited I was to talk about movies. Yeah. Just want to make sure that... Okay, the mic's good. We're good. So, right. let's, let's do your movie of the week first. My movie of the week is Catch-22. Now, have you heard of Catch-22? I feel like I should, but I don't think I have. It was, uh, it was, uh, it came out in the 1970, and oh, it's dang. an anti-war movie. And my dad's been trying to get me to watch it ever since I became like I turned like 17. He's like he's been like, I never showed you this movie as a kid because it's too it's you can't watch it as a kid. But now now you need to see it, and and he's been trying to get me to see it for three years. And I've honestly tried to sit down and watch it before, but I've just, like, gotten distracted, and I've never done it. So, over the holiday season, he was like, we're going to sit down, and we're going to watch Catch-22. And I watched Catch-22, and it's amazing. Dang. And I think um, it's underrated, because I I don't hear people talking about it, and they should. I honestly think it should be considered right up there with, like, Doctor Strangelove and, like, Apocalypse Now when it comes to, like, anti-war movies. Wow. Of the era, because it's, it's very, very good. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. And I give it a, give it a, give it a shot. It's a comedy, very, very, very dark comedy. Got some good old Alan Arkin. Yeah, it's got a great cast. It's got Anthony Perkins. It's got Orson Welles. Yeah. It's got so many, so it's many got good Martin actors. Martin Sheen. It. Martin Sheen. I like Martin, Martin Sheen, Sheen as as a young man looks exactly like Martin. Sheen. It looks exactly like Charlie Sheen. He looks and talks exactly like Charlie Sheen. He does. And it's so weird. Oh my goodness! What is that show? Two and a Half Men. No, 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 no. With Martin Sheen. Uh, where he played the president? Yes. West Wing. West Wing. Yeah. I've been watching some West Wing. It's a good show. We'll get there. Yeah. I forgot about it until now, though. So, yeah. Catch-22. Check it out. Yeah. Nice. Um, my movie of the week is going to be, uh, is, is probably going to be my movie of last year, uh, is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated film Ooh. that came out late last year. Yes. Ooh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I adore this film. This movie is awesome. I love it. I want to say it's some of the most fun I've ever had with an animated movie, probably ever. I am ready to buy this film. <laughs> it's, 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 I was ready to buy this film in theater. It it, it, it it it's the best of every single world it could possibly be considered a part of because it's it's probably the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Oh, definitely, like, like by a long shot, because it for me easily it truly understands the character of Spider-Man and it, it it really captures the idea of what makes Spider-Man so great. 
and it it's the humor actually works a fair amount yeah like the i thought from the trailer i thought the humor would like really get in the way and it would be really cringy and annoying but it's actually it works for it, the most it part it fits so well and it yeah it fits it doesn't feel out of place it's just like it would be naturally humorous in this kind of situation there's a couple scenes where it's like this should be a little more perilous than it than they're treating it but it's like that's also that's spider-man you know that he 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 handles perilous situations with humor so yeah i just yeah and it and it has like dark moments and it has like emotional moments that are like they're not like cheap or manipulative they're like there's like actual stakes to this movie and you actually feel emotional and it's 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 amazing it's sure. fun it's funny it's it gets you where it counts the animation is amazing oh, Let's talk about that for a minute. So yeah. I, I, when March hits, my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy this movie on, on Blu-ray, digital, deluxe, everything edition, and I'm going to find the art book online. I put it on my Christmas list. I didn't get it for Christmas, and now i got to go buy it on my own, and I'm going to own this art book because this movie is the most stunningly beautiful thing I've seen all year, I think. Oh, yeah. It's just mesmerizing. It's so good. The, it, especially if you if you were really into like comic book art styles, because it is the best animated comic book style movie ever made. Because they they pretty consistent with the the art style, and it looks great. I uh, see from the first trailers I saw, I was worried it would look like your average Pixar animated movie with like a comic book filter over it, but it's not like that at all. In no. fact, there's a lot of really fun little comic book things included, like you know, action bubbles, you know, and whatnot. Action bubbles, like the wham when somebody yeah. gets hit. I like. The... There's this this little when they're when they're swinging through the forest, you see the little thwip. The yes, little, it writes out the little thwip yes. next to his his, his uh, things. You, you get that. You sometimes yeah. even get word bubbles, thought bubbles. Yeah, uh, just all of that fun stuff. And and, and visually, this movie is just yeah. like masterfully put together. Like the visuals are next level, and the way it's edited together is fantastic. And it's just like it handles the most mundane things, like expo exposition and flashbacks, in the most interesting way. Yeah, I it's, just it's a visual treat. <laughs> I I absolutely loved it. I I can't really find anything wrong with it. I can I because I like it so much. I'm there just was blind. a grand total of like one story thing I thought was a little weird and unresolved, but that's it. And I, maybe I'll tell you after the podcast because okay. I don't really want to go into spoilers. I got you. But like, it, but it, even then, it didn't bother me. I was like, it was. I, I it occurred to me in the moment. I was like, I don't know if that was really like f explained well, or like if that was really fully realized. But at, at the end of the movie, I was like, I still love it. I don't care. Yeah, I but just, <laughs> yeah, this, this movie from top to bottom, cast phenomenal. Uh, the art direction even better than phenomenal the apparently the, everything it was apparently so, isn't good. sony's trying to like copyright the animation style used for this i think or something like that which would be a shame that would be a shame because i want to see more movies like this not yeah. necessarily made by sony because for every bit of goodwill that sony gets with me like blade runner 2049 and then this it's like <laughs> For every Blade Runner 2049, there's a Ghostbusters. And for every Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, there's a Emoji movie. <laughs> so, a movie which is, fun fact, so horrible, I sat down to watch it and couldn't last five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's like, I, I don't love the idea of yeah. Sony having like exclusive rights to this animation style, but... We'll see. I don't know. Well, especially if Marvel does end up buying back uh, its rights like it wanted to. Yeah. Um, that would be a real bummer to see this, this kind of new series, which very easily could become a new re reoccurring oh, series, I, if, if there was just a, disappear. If there was a sequel to this, I, specifically with the same writers, um, and maybe even without the same writers, cause, just because I love this movie so much, but if there's a sequel to this, I would see it, no questions asked. 
Definitely. Because I, I really want to see more in this universe because it's so great and it's like there's so much more you can do with it, you know? It's it, like Yeah, it's yeah. so colorful, just so delightful. The characters are just likable. Yeah. It, it does this weird thing where there's an animated movie with likable characters. Like it, <laughs> you wow. don't see that very often. <laughs> Especially from oh. Sony. Yeah. And it it's just... like I geez. Yeah, this this movie is is by far one of my favorite movies. Um, it might end up on my like, you know how Letterbox is those top four. It might end up I, there. I, yeah, I could not um, disagree with you on that one. Like, but yeah, I just and you know I I if we would have recorded this podcast sooner, I might have said something along the lines of you know I might just be overhyping it because we just saw it. You know, not looking back at it, but it's been weeks. Yeah, it's been weeks since we've seen it. It was we saw it before Christmas and it's oh, now yeah. well after New Year's. Yeah. So I I I every time I think about it, I just want to see it again. Same. So that's what I've been thinking. I've thought yeah. about going back to the theater a couple Honestly, times. Honestly, yeah, I would totally do that. <laughs> so <laughs> because it's just that good. Um that I'm willing to pay well, then, to see it again. Then again, I've I've done that for movies I don't even like. So, I mean, that's that's so I would I would see just about anything more than once, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would see this more than once. Definitely. I saw Spectre um, twice. And I didn't even like it the first time. I was like, <laughs> okay, I guess we'll see it a second time cuz What the hell? Well, cuz cuz <laughs> because matt was back in town and he wanted to go see it and abe's like come with us and i was like i want to spend time with abe and matt okay, so it's like fair, okay yeah. fine i'll come on so it wasn't to go see specter it was to go hang out with your friends yeah and yeah. there just happened to be a substandard james bond film involved yeah gotcha yeah. <laughs> um now let's let's kind of set up this day so i was trying to celebrate i've, I've graduated i'm going Yee. back next fall but i've graduated with my two-year um so I, I was like all right i haven't been to a movie in the theaters since we saw overlord and that's a, that upsets me so mm-hmm. we're gonna go and we're gonna do a double feature bam and so colin's like but what are we gonna watch and i'm like well we definitely have to see the new spider-man film because we were just talking about that because yeah. you wanted to see it you were asking people and i'm like yeah that day's not really working yeah how's this day and you're like yeah cool i'm like i kind of wanted to do a double feature that day you want to see something else he's like yeah but what and I, I started looking at times for movies. Yeah, and you're and like, there was, well, what would be a good companion piece to this animated Spider-Man not, movie? Hold your horse, okay? <laughs> so at first I was looking at at movies that I had no remote interests in. Like, yeah. just just to shoot out jokes. So I was like, how about Bumblebee? Uh, how about <laughs> Aquaman? Aquaman? Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I came across a movie that we both actually really did want to see, which was the favorite mm. uh so i'm like well we got spider-man and the favorite <laughs> and they line up really well as far as the times man that was a weird double you want to double feature it and yeah. so he's well, just... i was like yeah i mean i want to see both of them but are you sure you want to see the favorite and spider-man in the same day in the same trip i and you know what i was like i'm just so ready to go see movies again i said hell yeah let's yeah. do it and so we did. We sat in the theater, watched two hours of Spider-Man, had a great time. Yeah, and it should be noted we watched Spider-Man first, which was probably a mistake. Yeah, because probably. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, we went uh, almost directly to the favorite. Yeah, we just walked right over, and we just sat down. Yep. And we saw the, the same trailer for that, that dumb King Arthur movie. Yeah. Like kid in the Stone or whatever. Kid in the, the kid Kidney in the Stone. stone. Kidney stone or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! The kid who would be king. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. With uh, with Professor X. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, Professor Professor X for the shots that they could afford him for. Otherwise, it's just an unknown kid actor playing the same character because budgets. Yo. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, we watched the favorite. Yeah, now, the favorite is the new Yorgos Lanthimos movie, and um, we have a we have a rough history of Yorgos Lanthimos. We both really like his work, but Josh, it's upsetting. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's I, difficult. I to... absolutely adore him and his style and what he does, but it's upsetting. Mm-hmm. It's really upsetting. It is. So I wasn't sure 
uh, the the movie, the trailers looked like this was going to be more lighthearted, and yes, it was. It, it looked it, it looked like a comedy. I mean, yeah, but, but the, this this still had it, the Yorgos it, it still stuff. has the Yorgos stuff to it, and it's like it became a clear very early on. While this movie does have a bit more of a lighthearted edge to it, there is still that Yorgos thing going on, which is that like it makes you feel awful in, yeah. a lot, in a lot of scenes uh it, it doesn't have the killing of a sacred deer thing where it leaves you feeling awful yeah it, i mean it oh it, god thank goodness it leaves you feeling a lot of things but awful isn't really one of them but there's a lot of scenes that are just oof. <laughs> so yeah yeah be warned it's not exactly the the light-hearted comedy the trailers make it out to look like but it is it is you know it's it's not as soul crushing as killing of a sacred deer not not by a long shot yeah so this is a a two hour long movie right after spider-man that we're sitting down to see and it yeah. kicks it off with um Goodness sakes, what does it kick it off with? I don't remember how this movie starts. It, it starts with a uh, scene of uh, Olivia Coleman and Rachel Weisz. Uh, Olivia Coleman plays Queen Anne and Rachel Weisz is her, like, serve... Her, like, like her hand. Her, her hand of the queen yes, or something. Yes, yes. And her, uh, and, the, and, um... The queen is gifted the 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 hand the maid whatever the Rachel Vice the queen is gifted Rachel Vice a uh, replica of the castle and Rachel Vice is like this is oh, a right. this is a gross expenditure we're at war and the queen's like oh I did not know that <laughs> or, or like the war is not over and this movie is very British by the way oh very. get used to it it's very. Uh, <laughs> Very dry and very British, and Olivia Coleman's fantastic. In Ooh. It. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> my phone. So this this movie is essentially two hours of Rachel Weisz, Olivia Coleman, and Emma Watson in this no, Emma Stone, Emma Stone uh, in the, in stuck this, in a three way battle in a in a very <laughs> very strange lesbian love triangle. Yeah, very very manipulative, very. Uh, uh, very twisted yeah <laughs> and uh kind of uncomfortable yeah it's very uncomfortable through a lot of the movie and that's a yorgos lanthimos thing and mm -hmm. uh it's really good i don't know like as far as the plot goes the, the plot really doesn't matter to me uh, yeah, as no, much it's, it's no not really it's it's just sort of stuff stuff there's just a lot of yeah. there's a lot of back and forth and backhandedness amongst yeah. all the characters. Nicholas Holt's in it. Yeah, I forgot to mention I him. I actually really like him. In yeah, it. he was really good. I mean, he's such a despicable character. Oh, they're all so <laughs> awful in this. Movie. I think I I like I think Nicholas Holt had the most heart behind his character because he's such a terrible person, but he seemed to really enjoy playing such a terrible person. And it's he, like, he really did. He had a lot of fun with it. That's mm -hmm. like I can't blame him. That's a that's a delightfully horrible character <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, but i mean the basically the the scenes that i walked with so one of my main complaints for this movie is i i believe it feels a little drawn out yes um i'd say more so than yorgos's last two movies definitely it's um very very slow this this movie didn't fly by uh, like uh, like the lobster did. I felt the lobster went pretty fast. Yes. And um, Killing of a Sacred Deer is so engaging that despite it being fairly slow, it, it <laughs> goes by quickly. That movie... Okay, so... I, that So Killing of a Sacred Deer, let's yeah. get into this a little bit once okay. again. So it, it's weird, right? Because well, this would be it's, like, what, the 18th time we've talked about yes, Killing of a Sacred Deer? But the reason why that movie is so interesting is because it goes purposefully slow and drudges on so that you just stew in the awfulness of it yeah. and feel even worse. So the, the Which enhances the experience, which makes yeah. it go faster. Yeah. So that movie's an insane enigma in my head and it drives is. me crazy. This, on the other <laughs> hand, doesn't really want, doesn't really have the same intention. So when it when it's slow, it feels slow. Yes, but it is still very interesting. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I liked all the characters, and it, it was enough to keep me engaged through the whole thing. But it feels much longer than two hours. Definitely. I was like, at the end of it, I was like, geez, it felt like three hours, just because it's very slow. 
Mm-hmm. But if you really like Yorgos Lanthimos' style of writing, you'll definitely enjoy this. Oh, yeah. I mean, characters feel a lot more human in this than they have in his last two movies, I'd say. I mean, there's still a, like, a mannered, robotic way some people speak, but there's a lot more emotion going on this time around, especially with Olivia Coleman's character. Yeah. Definitely more naturalistic than anything that I've seen from him. Yeah. So, yeah. And... You know, there really is no point in talking about the plot, so let's just talk about some characters. Yeah, I want to talk about Olivia Coleman because she really yeah. steals the show. She's and amazing. She, she's like she is the the focal point of the whole movie because she is, and and it's like it, this is a running thing in Yorgos Lanthimos' character is when I say she's a good character, I don't mean she's a likable character. I mean oh, she God. plays such a pathetic pathetic character just a such grown a, child a grown child who is so and she she gives like the most groveling pathetic performance and it's just a wonder to watch it like is. it's like it's it's how can amazing. she do this so convincingly it's like i i, I sometimes forgot it's just olivia coleman playing a character and i've yeah. For, throughout a movie, I was trying to think of Olivia Coleman in other movies when she's been like fairly well mannered, and it's like I can't even think of what that's like because this is just a whole new level. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, and you never knew what she was gonna do next, like yeah. a screaming four year old. Yeah, like an infant. Like it was amazing. <laughs> and th- what's amazing about her character is no spoilers. Eventually, you you don't think that you're you're gonna sympathize with this character at all, but eventually you learn what's happened in her life, and you're like, oh, and it starts to make sense. Yeah, and you do feel sorry for her in the end of the movie. At least I did. At the end, there, I was just like, I just, I I hate everybody in this movie, but her. I just feel sorry for her it's just so i mean she's still a despicable person but yeah, like but she, yeah. she at least has you know we at least it's know the like, reasoning well and, and just like you just realize the whole movie people have just been manipulating her and she's had a horrible life and it's like i just, i can't blame her for being so being the way she is well horrible life in contrast to the rest of the people in this film yeah you know keep in mind she still is the queen right well, yeah but <laughs> so, she's yeah yes i we get what you mean just she, wanted there's to clarify. been some insane tragedy in her yes. life yeah and and so i mean yeah she blew it out of the water there's a part in the in the movie they never show it but she has a stroke in the movie and then yeah. she just all of a sudden, never half of her face yeah, yeah. is is drooping, and I don't know how she did that. If that was <laughs> yeah. prosthetics or if she was just that much control over her face, but I knew right away she had a stroke. Yeah, yeah. It's you not know? really mentioned. It's just sort of it's one scene, just like yeah. And if somebody would have told me that she had a stroke halfway through making this movie, I would have believed them. Right. I don't even know if she didn't. <laughs> I didn't even look it up. If if it turns out that Olivia Coleman did have a stroke, maybe then you're a phenomenal method actor (laughs) that's horrible i'm sorry (laughs) yeah but i mean really it was it was amazing to to watch that you know it's as far as acting goes that's that was amazing yeah yeah she was she was great um you want to move on to rachel rachel vice is a great cold hearted bitch yeah (laughs) and she pulls it off amazingly (laughs) and much like much like the queen's character by the end of the movie you do actually have a fair amount of sympathy for her at Mm -hmm. least i did because it's like the whole time you kind of in the it's it's like i don't i I don't want to spoil anything but this is not a thing that is very spoilery in my opinion in the first half of the movie you kind of root for emma want emma stone because she's a servant like people are are when she needs to clean things people just give her a bucket of lye for her to stick her hands in just because they don't like her she's like sleeping in this room full of like a hundred other people and it's like she just lives an awful life and she seems like a nice enough person and you want her to succeed but by the end of the movie and you think that rachel vice is like her is like the antagonist of the story but but the second half of the movie it's kind of flipped and emma stone is kind of the antagonist and you more so sympathize with Rachel Weiss. And Rachel Weiss actually has this um, 
Well, I won't say what she said, but you'll know what I mean. She has this scene where she's talking to the queen through a doorway, and it's actually very, very touching and heartfelt. And it's like, that's the scene where things really shifted in my mind. And it's like, yeah, Rachel Weisz is kind of in the right here. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a good balance. <laughs> and yeah. Rachel Weisz pulls off that that uh, nuanced character pretty well. Really cold-hearted but has that warmth when she needs it and like it's cold-hearted but she truly understands the nature of love yeah and, and she she knows what she needs to be whereas emma stone is not concerned with anything but herself her own well-being yeah and so yeah. <laughs> i suppose that leads us to emma stone's character yeah um she yeah like you said she started off as as a servant who was sold for her genitalia essentially yeah. um and and from there she escaped and basic basically came to her cousin, Rachel was her cousin, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So came to her and said, "Can you employ me?" She was employed, and then she started sneaking her way kind of towards the queen, finding little ways to appease the queen so she could get closer to her, mm -hmm. and thus get a better life. Um, and and she throughout the entire movie, you know, she starts as this really innocent you know, peasant person who's just trying to one-up, get a one-up in the world, and she ends up becoming a conniving, cold-hearted, like her cousin seemed, uh, yeah. person who is out for nobody but herself, and mm -hmm. it really is something that, that is an interesting change in yes. your perspective of her. This movie has just a very fascinating arc with a lot of moving parts, and it all comes together in a in a somewhat satisfying way yeah and yeah yeah and i i thought she did a, a really good job in this movie you know i w at first i was i was like really an emma emma stone in in a yorgos lanthimos movie that's kind yeah. of a weird pick but yeah. you know by the time i saw her smashing her face in with a book i was like yeah no i'm okay with it mm -hmm. it's good <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good one oh uh, yeah not gonna lie yeah i don't I um I think it's kind of tied with the lobster as far as like the last two Yorgos Lanthimos movies go, um and I still prefer I still think Killing of the Sacred Deer is my favorite yeah. of his I've seen. Just with how impactful that movie is, <laughs> yeah. it's it's still his best in my in my book. Yeah, but the favorite's very very good, and I just can't wait to see what else he does. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm really excited for everything mm -hmm. that he has coming. Because, yeah, you know, that was really close to being both of our favorite movies. If it wasn't for Spider-Man, if yeah, it wasn't yeah. for um, Catch-22, it probably would have been, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, but, dang, we've seen some good movies lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Got anything else as far as movies to talk about? Mm, no, I don't think so. Um, I actually did see one more. I, uh... Movie Club was showing Moonlight, and so I got to rewatch Moonlight. Um, and so that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, I... I really love Moonlight. Yeah, it's good. I didn't get around for that showing, but uh, ooh, it's really good. It is. It's it's really good. Uh, I appreciate it a lot, and, you know, I'm, I'm just... I'm glad. Glad I saw it again. Yeah. Are you just... At... <laughs> Sorry, continue, oh, continue. No. <laughs> continue. What was that? I don't know, just, just keep going. <laughs> That's just something I need to do, I forgot about it. Oh my god. I don't know why, that was just funny to me. So, I'm going to explain it just because. Okay, uh, so Colin just decided to update his letterbox. <laughs> While we were doing the podcast. So I'm sitting here talking about wonderful movies, and there he goes, updating his letterbox about how he saw Woodshock, and he gave it a one star out of five. Yeah. And then... I just like the idea, you're, you're like really praising all the movies you've seen recently, and I'm silently giving a very low rating to Woodstock, just like as you're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Um... So, yeah. And that was not even my plan. I was just like, oh, right, this is the thing I need to do. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what I did forget to talk about? I forgot to talk about uh, the concert I went to. Oh, Woodstock? 
What what concert do you go to? Oh, I know, I know what it is. Uh, so this what past weekend I went and saw a Trans Siberian Orchestra up at the XL Center in in uh, Minneapolis. Nice. Where's that St. Paul? The what XL? Yeah. Is that St. Paul? I want to say that's St. Paul. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, so I went to the XL and I saw Trans Siberian Orchestra, and I have news for you. It's really fun. It's really fun. Good. I, I hear they got good pyro. They have one of the best light slash laser slash pyro show I've ever seen. Yeah. The laser and light show is beyond good. like it's probably the best I've ever seen. Sick. The well, pyro yeah. is up there, but it's not like a hundred percent. But the laser light show is amazing. Uh, the music sounded really good. If you like Trans Siberian Orchestra music, you'll like them. Uh, there is a really big black guy that comes out on stage, and he has the most beautiful voice. Uh, I, I mean, I I, uh, <laughs> I was I was gonna say I, I don't know if this will sound um, stereotypical, but I hope not because it's a very positive thing. Uh, black people just have amazing voices. Some yeah, like like it it's like it's amazing. Have you ever heard Antoine Antoine Stanley in uh, Wolfpack? He's just mm-hmm. Whew. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, I I don't think it's strictly to one race or the other. No, but, no, no. But, but this just... guy in particular, right? He had just this smoothness to it's his like a, voice like it was like a fine voice. bourbon yeah like you know a smoky voice like <laughs> he, yeah and he had the power to back it up let me tell you he sure. comes out on stage and he's like once and i'm like oh <laughs> it's, it's then, like he sounds like kratos and the new god of war yeah a lot like that but sure. like even more because he's got the softness too so then yeah. he would go and then and i was like i'm there yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it was something, beautiful. There's something great about somebody with just like a really good voice. Yeah, <laughs> they, well, that's what they hired this guy for. They hired him to wear a nice suit, walk out on stage, read this little nice story that they have going on in between the music sections, and then walk off stage. That's his job, and he nailed it. He mm-hmm. nailed it. I love that man's voice. I don't even know his name. I want to hear. You should him. just look it up. I probably just, like, should find YouTube videos of him. <laughs> I will after the podcast. Well, if it turns out oh. he's like, well, like he, he's like that guy that you can pay him to say stuff. That'd be great. The guy, you, you know who I'm talking about. There was the there was the Tyrone, the uh, the the African dude that did that, and then there's this new guy, the the, the like the white guy. Do you remember? No. Do you know. Oh, you have to see some of his stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like people just pay him to say things, and it's just the dumbest. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you are you familiar with this like whole thing I'm talking? Like, I know the the, 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 the concept, the, the big man Tyrone. Are you familiar with that? Vaguely. Okay. I I know the concept that you're talking about though. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so Trans Siberian Orchestra, great time. It was a two and a half hour long show with no breaks though, so be ready for that. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a long show, but it didn't feel that long. I I we were just having a great time. Um. We went and got Italian food beforehand. That was great. We went and watched that. That was great. And then we went home. It was great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you get a chance to go see them for, you know, maybe a, not too crazy expensive seats because you can get some really crazy expensive seats, mm-hmm. go right ahead and do it because they are they are really just a really good show. Sick. Good for all friends, family, ages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We had this little girl behind us. And she was losing her freaking mind. She's like, this is changing my life! <laughs> yeah, I, I, had oh. that, I had that experience the first time I watched Trans-Siberian Orchestra. <laughs> what? <laughs> I had that experience the first time I listened to Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Sorry. Oh it was I, was trying to fo- I was trying to focus on my work here. Oh, yeah. I see that. <laughs> Okay. This, is, this is a video I'm gonna bring up when we're done. Yeah, there's just there's a video that he has pulled up right now, and it's a guy in it's like a doctor dabbing, and the title of the video is Ligma. Yeah. <laughs> look it up. Look it up for yourself. Don't look it up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well. So yeah, that's my yeah. news on Trans Siberian Orchestra. Do you want to talk about video games? No. I want to talk about TV real quick, okay, because I got two got, things. So I got, got West Wing, 
the Martin Sheen show where he's the president. That show was awesome. Yeah. I I wasn't like down. I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. I'm like, I don't know. It kind of looks pretentious. It kind of looks like what a what oh. a 47 year old lady would watch. My dad was really into that show when he was 47. For good reason. Yeah. Sorry, I meant 74. Sure. Um, but like, it's a good show. It's got good comedy. It's got good actors. Yeah. Yeah. I no, am I, having a great time. I agree. With it. I used to really like West Wing, but I haven't seen it in a long time. It's good. Uh, so I've been watching that, and then also I watched like the first half of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I know I said I watched the first episode. I've watched more, and I'm still digging it. It's still a good time. Sick. That's all I got on TV. Right. I got Mario plus Rabbids and Donut <sighs> County. And, well, Shadow of the Colossus, but I don't really need to talk about that. Just watch my streams. Uh, uh, I got Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I'm going to buy that game when I get a Switch. And it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, I didn't really think, I, I don't really like turn-based strategy. And, yeah, it's, it's not really, it's still not really my thing. I mean, I'm actually, I've actually stuck with this more than i typically would but it's just like something about the lack of control i just, I just it just doesn't feel satisfying to me like when when it's the enemy's turn and you just get screwed over and it's completely out of your control it's like and it's completely randomized sometimes the game's just the game's just like no you lose now <laughs> nothing you can do about it <laughs> goodbye and it's and it's and it, and it is like that sometimes but it is one of the better ones I've played. It's pretty accessible, and it is it is charming. So, yeah, it's a good time. If you yeah. if you're more a fan of turn based strategy, you'd probably like it more than me. But I'm having a somewhat good time with it. Well, let me tell you, I hate the XCOM games. Right, and it it functions like exactly like the XCOM yes. games. But They're just way more streamlined and like like simplified. And that's why I think I'll like it is because yeah. when I play <laughs> XCOM, I find that it seems fairly convoluted, and I just don't enjoy myself with the, that. That is the best thing about this. It's not convoluted in the slightest. It's okay. extremely straightforward. If somebody's behind cover, you have a fifty percent chance of hitting them. If you have a line of sight on them, you have a hundred percent chance of hitting them. You know, it's it's very cool, very straightforward, very simple. But as it goes along, it introduces a little more depth and a lot more strategy, and it's like, but yeah, cool. You would like it if you if I you if you like the idea of XCOM but want something a little more accessible, you would like it. Cool, very cool. <clears throat> All right. Neat. You want to talk about Donut County? Because I Ooh, yeah, I beat, love the idea of Donut County. I beat County. Donut County, and it's a good time. It's it's a very funny, very charming, very uh, uh, addictive gameplay type experience. You can beat it in like a little over an hour, like I did. And uh, it's worth it. Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, because okay. it's, just, it's just very funny, very charming. I like the characters. It's got kind of almost an adventure time sense of humor a lot of times, so okay. yeah, cool. it's very very, it's very cute. It's a cute little game, and uh, I like the mechanic of swallowing things with a little hole. And it actually there's some puzzles that are incorporate the hole that are actually kind of clever. And uh, yeah, good game. Awesome. I feel like it it right about when the concept starts to wear thin, that's when the game ends. So it knows not to take it too far. So yeah, it's a Nice little, tight little experience. This is one of those games that when it came out, I was, you know, it's a shame because this movie was, or this movie, this game was, was announced and the idea was announced and before it was able to be released, there was already like 40 copies of, of this game with different names, worse controls, worse visuals, worse story that had been released to the public on the app stores of their phones and everything. Uh, okay. And so that's, that's the thing I missed out on. I yeah, didn't even so know about that. There was like country hole, you know, <laughs> like just some really awful games yeah, that were released. There's for... a website about that actually. It's called farmersonly.com. You better believe <laughs> you know, it. Just just as I I, I, I conceptualized <laughs> that joke, I decided I shouldn't do it, but then I did do it. That's the story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> 
But so, I mean, this this game was outshadowed by the games that were able to be released within its time of announcement to its time of release. Mm. And it's really, it really is a bummer. This it game, wasn't really, though? It was. Because, this... like, I, I never heard of any of that. I just, like, I knew there's Donut County and I wanted to play it. And then it came out and I played it. Yeah, one, you're one of the lucky ones then. Congratulations. Sure. But do people really get that swept away by obvious knockoffs? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, That's why obvious knockoffs are being made still. I suppose. Is because <laughs> kids and just gullible people and people who don't pay attention that closely, they will think that either that's the real thing or that the real thing isn't out yet, so I'm going to get this thing that looks like the real thing. Yeah, when I was a kid, play. I had Veggie Samurai on the phone. <laughs> That's a real thing. Look it up. Is it? Yeah. Dang. No, I'm not even making a joke. There was a game called Veggie Samurai, and it was better than Fruit Ninja. Wow. Because it had a lot more to do. There was a lot of modes. There's like, puzzles and shit. It was great. Awesome. Well, okay, then. Yeah. There you go. Um, but in this case, it really, it really hurt. Um, I think they ended up taking a lot of uh, sales away from them, actually, because this game was released for, like, 12 bucks or something 15 bucks yeah donut county was and these other games were being released for you know a dollar or for free with a bunch was, of ads was donut county on mobile devices oh yeah oh you okay. can get donut county on your phone no I, I have it on ps4 like a real person yeah yeah but you can get it on your phone right is, is right the yeah. kind of the point um and you know what? I I was really bummed out when I kind of heard that news that you know this this game was losing interest because other games were coming out that had just ripped the idea straight from their kind of announcement. And I don't really know how to prevent that because you can't advertise your game without announcing it. Yeah. And if you advertise your game before it's going to be released, then people can just steal that idea and release cheap copies and get bunches bunches of money. Yeah. Or you could just release the game without announcing it, and then you're the first one out there, but then you have no fan base or build-up. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I don't know how you would fix that, but it's it's upsetting. I was I was pretty upset when I heard that news. Do, do you, like, pull, like, a Hideo Kojima, and not only don't tell anybody anything about what your game is, but release <laughs> a playable demo that ultimately has nothing to do with the game in question, and throw people off the scent. But the funny thing about it, well, see the thing, <laughs> the thing with PT is like PT. Obviously, the full Silent Hill game wasn't gonna be like that. PT was just like a little demo of like the kind of things it would be capable of. And then, and then yeah. it's like when he when he's, <laughs> it's funny because then he did Death Stranding. He's like, I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna release a gameplay trailer with no gameplay in it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just gonna you you walk around a hill. You don't get anything. <laughs> but the funny thing, I mean, he is such a well-known guy with yeah. so many well-known well, he, games on his belt. He fully understands that people will buy anything he puts out. For so, sure. so he's like, I'm just gonna, like, you don't, you don't get anything. <laughs> you don't get anything. He's <laughs> like, you, you, you could buy the game if you want to know what it is. Because <laughs> I mean, we still don't know what Death Stranding is. And yeah. it comes out, like, what, this year? Oh, Probably not. I don't know what it is. <laughs> It'll probably be pushed another four years. I don't even know if it's a real game. Maybe it's just a, like a <laughs> just an interactive uh, cutscene. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't I, know yeah. what it is. I I don't care. I'm still really excited about it. Sure, because it's Hideo Kojima. That's yeah. the whole point. That's everybody the only loves, reason I'm excited. Everybody loves Hideo Kojima, and rightly yeah. so. He's a disturbed genius. Yeah, he's just a neat guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's just it's just the the lead up to death stranding's been so bizarre <laughs> yeah i yes i'm very excited for that um oh hot update on uh mizaki the the dark souls mizaki sure um he has one you know sekiro is coming out in march which i'm also very excited about uh the de Ray the de descent i forget how to say it but it's a vr game that they released that's supposed oh. to be pretty neat Came out a little while ago. Um, I obviously can't play it. I don't have VR. Imagine playing Bloodborne in VR. Oh my god, that would be awful. Oh yeah. Like I would first person do it for hours. Um, but then, uh, it has been announced that there are 
either two or three more games from from software that are in the works, kind of in the background works. They haven't been announced what games yet, but I am getting pumped. Are you kidding me? They have two, three more games up, lined up, ready to go. Dang, son, I'm ready. Nice. You're getting a little too pumped here. Uh, question. Is Sekiro, is that considered part of the souls universe we don't know yet i'm okay. assuming well Gosh, from I, a game i can't even assume from a gameplay perspective it has a lot of similarities but yeah i thought i heard the souls universe is kind of over i so you know i've everything everybody is kind of going back and forth on it i don't think okay. anybody knows you th- all right because we got sekiro coming out but the weird thing about sekiro is that it isn't uh create your own character it is one character you get to right. play the same guy everyone plays that guy yeah and there is no uh leveling up system like in the dark souls bloodborne right. series it's all based on your weapons and your own skills that you level up uh so it's not like I level up my strength and dex, you know. That's that's interesting to me because yeah. it, it actually seems like it might be something I could potentially get into because it seems pretty, you know, straightforward and accessible. Like like Dark Souls boiled down to like a very simplified streamlines type thing. Yeah, I think that's kind of what they're going for. And you know <laughs> yeah. what? I don't think that it's an entirely bad idea because they're still going to have a lot of different play styles within the game just yeah. with which weapons you use because you have these arm augment augments that you can get where like you have an axe one you have a fire spray one you have a you know a bunch of different sure. little things that you can do yeah. with your arm um, but, but so yeah like what what i'm like asking is like gameplay wise clearly it takes a lot of inspiration from the souls series oh yeah but, sorry like, i got off track but that. like it, it's it's uh it, it, but it, it's the the verdicts out yet of whether or not it actually has anything to do with the Souls series, other than the obvious gameplay mechanics. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know because you have the gameplay mechanics are obviously there. There's a lot more verticality, right? But... And that actually looked really cool. I, I oh looking at yeah. the uh, like the, the the verticality to it, I was like, that's really neat. Yeah, and that's like that's a good way to um, innovate on the the system they have. Definitely. But as far as it being a part of the same world, you know, there's a lot of imagery that kind of matches up with some yeah, Bloodborne yeah. and Dark Souls, and there's a lot of little bits here and there that people are speculating that they're connected, but there's also been talk about how they're done with that entire universe, yeah. which would be a shame. I mean, I, I understand that you want to end while you're ahead, and Dark Souls 3 came out, and that was awesome, and Bloodborne came out, and that was amazing. Well, and... If Sekiro, Sekiro would be uh, an interesting addition to the Souls universe because, you know, Dark Souls, the core series, is um, European dark fantasy, and Bloodborne is, like, uh, more like, um, what am I thinking of? What's Victorian? the term? Well, Victorian, but what's the term for the kind of horror? Lovecraftian? That it's like Lovecraftian horror. Mm-hmm. It's Lovecraftian dark fantasy, and... Sekiro looks like kind of like feudal Japanese type stuff. Definitely. So it'd just be another cultural take on the Souls idea if it were a Souls installment. But either way, it'll be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I just I I don't know exactly how it's going to be connected or how it's not going to be connected. But it doesn't matter. I'm so ready for that game. I've been just pumped for it for mm-hmm. months now. Um, so yeah, yeah, this is very exciting. Every time I see it in the in the store, I'm like, I should buy it. Yeah. I should just buy it. Well, it's a, you know you will. I know I will. I'm hoping that they come out with, like, a, I don't know, a couple days beforehand, they release, like, a 10% off discount or something like they did for Batman. That was great. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Well, well, no, what the real stinger to that was you got 10% discount and all the DLC. <laughs> because i got i pre-ordered it like right when it was announced when it was just 60 dollars and like no dlc was even announced yet and then you while while i was (laughs) waiting i was looking at the countdown (laughs) i don't know if we've told this story before but it was i was in my house i was like it was like the last hour before the game came out and i was i was literally just on the tv i was just looking at the countdown because i was just like i'm gonna play this the second it comes out and then you called me and you're like oh hey i just picked up uh arkham knight uh 
with all the DLC. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, I bought this game two months ago. And you come in, you come in here an hour before it comes out and you get a better deal than me. And it's like, oh my god. It nice. Was... And then you ended up not playing it. For months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, uh, For a very cause, long cause time. Because you wanted to stay fresh because that was when Digibaka was a thing. Yeah. And, and we wanted to, yeah. Oh, yeah. What a bizarre situation that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my Lord. No, but that game's tight. It is. Yeah. Any, any key. Um, what do I got? I got more. I got more to talk about. Let's see. Yeah, I don't really um, think I have more. I'm just excited to play Smash. That seems to be our tradition now. <laughs> I come over, we do the podcast, we play Smash. Absolutely. Um, it's very fun. I've officially started Dragon's Dogma. Sweet. I, Dark I used to, Arisen. I, I used to play that game. It's really fun. You used to play that? Yeah. Yeah? Not yeah. a whole lot, but it was the very first game I got for Humble. Nice. Yeah. I've been playing it. It's pretty fun, right? I'm enjoying it. I uh, I haven't gotten super far into it, but let me tell you, there's some really interesting things. So at first, I wasn't... I forgot some of the mechanics when I was first playing it. I, it was trying to teach you the mechanics, then you dove into the game, and then I completely forgot all the mechanics. And, like, I forgot that this game was supposed to be an RPG. Yeah. You're supposed to run around, you're supposed to talk to everybody, you're supposed to get quests, you're supposed mm-hmm. to buy things, you're supposed to sell things... And I forgot about that because I'm like, I want a game like Dark Souls. And this is like, right, yeah. this is like JRPG levels of things you have to actually do. Mm-hmm. Where Dark Souls is like, all right, so you're going to go run. You're going to fight the boss. And this yeah, Dark isn't Souls that is game. like, this is the world. Good luck. Yes. Yeah. This <laughs> isn't no, that game. No, yeah. Dark, <laughs> d- yeah. It's a lot more. Yeah. Um, it's a traditional RPG. So I, at first I, I was like, I don't know if I'm digging this, but then I, you know, now I'm starting to really get into it and I'm having a great time. I made my character, I'm doing all the quests, I got twin daggers, I'm stabbing things, I'm shooting arrows. It's yeah. really fun. I I'm, did daggers too. Anytime I'm playing a, an RPG where it's like you, you could be a archer or a mage or a warrior or a rogue, I always go rogue. Yeah, that's like always my choice. <laughs> and let me tell you, I'm digging it. I at first, I'm you know, like it. I, I'm digging it. Yeah. At first, I wasn't sure, but you know, a hydra came. I climbed the hydra. I got on his head and I slashed at it, and then his head came off. Yeah. I was like, seriously, did that? Did this game just let me climb onto a hydra's head and then slash at its head in game, not a cutscene, and its head came off? Yeah. This game's dope. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Dragon's I, Dogma is like a cult classic. It's kind yeah. of uh, underrated. I'm having a great time with it. So I'm, I'm really excited to dig more into that. Uh, and then some bandits pushed a boulder onto my head and then killed me. Sure. Uh, so that wasn't quite as fun. But uh, we're playing it. We're, we're getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, do uh, you got any more news at all? Not really. I got one more news. What's your news? My news. Okay, so I'm. I've been. Is this the thing that you've been teasing me for this the is past the thing? I've been like teasing. two hours. It's true. Yeah. Um. So, I have been. So we're going on a trip, on the 18th, and I need something to do on, on our favorite rocket ship. Yes, I need something to do in that rocket ship on my way. Yeah. South. Um. So I'm like, sky. what would be a better thing to bring on a plane? Other than my phone. A switch. A switch. Yeah. I'm thinking that today might be the day I go and buy a a switch. You can get a swatch? I think I'm going to get me a swat. Alright. Cool. I'm nervous as fuck. You want me to come with you? I do want you to come with me. I want to get a swatch. I I want you to be there to be my consultant to ask if it's necessary. Like the other little bits and whistles. Yes, yes. yes. Um, You're going to want to get a pro controller immediately. Okay. The, if you don't spend money on anything else, get a pro controller. Gotcha. This so, thing makes the switch way better. Okay. <laughs> like like you you'll you can use the Joy Cons, but they suck. You can use a pro controller, and it's like a real controller. So can you use the pro controller with Mario Odyssey? Oh yeah, it's got full motion control. Okay. Yeah, it it functions just like the Joy Cons. You can shake it to do your your things and it's actually it actually works better than the joy cons because (laughs) instead of having to do both hands at once you just tilt the controller and you can do 
spin throw. And it's, uh, yeah. Nice. Very so, nice. yeah. So, yeah, I've been, you know, anytime I have to go spend large amounts of money or want to go spend large amounts of money, I get nervous. So I'm, I'm getting a little nervous right now because I think that's what I'm going to do after this. Sick. <sighs> Got to go to the bank first. But, yeah, so that's my new news. I'm going to do that, and then as soon as I'm done buying a Switch and all that stuff, I'm going to go home and I'm going to order the Solaire Amiibo online. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's my goal. So yeah, that's my hot news for the end of the podcast. Are you going to get Dark Souls on the Switch? Probably. No. Come on, man. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I got a long list of games I want to get. Bayonetta 1, 2, Dark Souls, Mario Odyssey, Mario Party. Um, Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate, duh. Uh, probably Let's Go, Pikachu or Eevee. Haven't decided which one. Yep. Uh, the Messenger. I definitely want to get The Messenger. Um so yeah, I got a, I got a whole list of things yeah. that I want to buy. So yeah, I'm very excited. Cool. You get to experience Mario Odyssey, which is probably Finally. probably one of my favorite games of the past few years. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. It's gonna be great. Yep. It's gonna be great. Anyway, you think it's about time to wrap up? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for seeing this episode. Uh, switch you later. I don't know what that means. Swatch. There's a swatch in these woods. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Swatch in these woods. What's that?